Hey guys, it's Vince. Today we are going to be looking at an area that I get questions on all the time. And that is the wiring of the GX16 input plugs. Now of course, I've got the client system here that I've been discussing in previous videos and I love using it as a model because it gives you guys visualization of what I'm talking about. These are my new GX16 pre-wired connectors. Now they've been out for quite some time and the reason I call them new is because many of you may or may not know that they exist. These will streamline your entire wiring of your system, whether it be an IDS system, which for my novice guys is an individual drive system, where you would have tons and tons of indiv individual wiring to do, or you could look at an integrated drive like a G540, and you would still require these to be wired, in which case we have four here for the inputs on the G540, and then we have two here for the outputs. So if you multiply, once again, what you're looking at on each lead, on a three pin, you're naturally looking at three connections, uh, not counting the other side. If you're looking at a five pin for my IDS guys with the individual drive system, the five pin is typically going to be used for your motor uh, actual inputs to your drive. So again, what is the fifth lead for? This is one of the major questions I always get asked. That fifth pin is going to be allocated to your ground lead. And the ground is for your shield drain. Just like the G540 has its shield drains for its inputs, we don't have that because we don't require it on this system as we do for an IDS system. An IDS system will require its ground drains from its motor cables going to a ground bus. So the principle is the same. And the wiring on these, once again, if you've never wired one of these, you can see just how much time these save you, especially since these are all wired with the proper silicone wire. Why I say it's proper, it's much easier to work with. Okay, so again, if you buy the five pin, you're gonna get the uh, dust cover as well. I give you the complete assembly. This is a five pin panel mount. And you will also get two properly matched frequency EMI ferrites to wrap around all of these leads. Now, when I say all of these leads, you will not be wrapping around any leads that are not carrying a signal. And the reason I say that is because a lot of guys get confused. They see the listing and they see the ferrites strapped around all the leads and then they say, oh, well, I'm supposed to wrap all of the leads. No, ferrites are only to be applied to any type of lead that's carrying a signal that you don't want corrupted. Because what we have to think about is those signals are what's going to actually control your system. So on a G540, and we look at this controller right here, if we look at the allocation pin label, GX16 wire diagram, uh, pin one is blue. Pin two is red G540. Pin one is going to the power supply, and uh, shield drain is pin three. So Again, very, very simple to wire in what you would actually filter then is the lead going to the G540. Why? Because that lead is a signal lead. This lead is going to your power supply. And you can see that right in the system. You can see the blue leads go into the power supply. So again, why I like using this, it's a great demonstration to see exactly how things are done. And of course, our green lead, which is our ground, is for our shield drains going to our bus bar. And then we, of course, we always check our system for continuity to make sure we have full continuity conduction on the ground of the power supply to the actual bus bar. So again, you can see just how much time these will save you. You don't have to guess about ferrites. These units come with ferrites as well. If you were going to mount four inputs, as you see here for a G540, for instance, you would be concerned about applying the ferrite to the red leads. Okay, and why I say the red leads like we just covered, that's the signal carrying lead. Okay, you do not have to filter every lead on the actual connector. It's only going to be applied to any leads carrying signals. That's what you need to be conscientious of. And again, I've stated this in numerous videos, I've, I've shown it in numerous builds, but it's a question that comes up all the time. And I think why it's coming up so much too is, let's be real, robotics is expanding at a dramatic pace. 
We are expanding in automation and civilian-based equipment all over the place because we all know how much money this equipment in the right hands can make. If you're serious about making money, a system like this, when it's set up properly, you're going to make money. Okay? And again, these type of connections where, again, I'm trying to relieve the stress, so to speak, of you guys having to assemble all these from scratch. These are pre-made, pre-done. You pick how many you want. If you were doing your system yourself, whether you buy a master edition enclosure like this, you have the option to buy these pre-wired, add them to the system, it's going to streamline your whole assembly. Okay, think about the time you're looking at. And I say that all the time. I just got an email this morning from a past client who I built a system for, and this happens a lot. I built the system for back in December, and now he's just finally getting his system running. I get messages like that all the time. It happens all the time. Life happens, and it sets your goals farther back. So anything you can do to mitigate that and streamline the process, you're in. And why I get asked about why do I use these connectors exclusively? Well, it's real simple. You can see here on the connector, we've got a alignment pin. So your female portion of this connector can only go in one way, and then it uses a screw locking system, so it cannot be unplugged unless that screw lock is removed. So again, very, very nice connectors, and that's why they're used in aviation, because they screw lock. Okay, so it's like a posi lock type uh, application uh, use. So looking at this, and now looking at this and you see how everything ties in, I hope I've answered many of your questions um, as far as using these. Because again, when I've released these, I, they're hard to keep in stock because I get a lot of guys buying them. Once they realize what they're used for, they're like, this is great. I don't have to wire three quarters of my system. And it's so true. Because when you factor in on an IDS system with individual drives, these units, if you have four axes, you're wiring in four of these. For the five pin, typically, if your motor is bipolar, and bipolar simply means it uses four leads. Well, we know on a five pin connector, once again, as I stated earlier, the fifth pin is used to your shield drain. You would have to wire four of these, and that's 20 soldering points on all of these to get this like this. So do the math on how much time that's going to take, and that's just for your motor cables. So take that into consideration. You look at a system like this, even though it's integrated, and there's still weeks worth of time for me to build it. So what do you think is going to be for you if you're novice and looking at this? I think there's a misappropriation of time if you're serious about doing this in a specific time frame, which I get a lot of clients, well, can I build a system you think within a week? Now you see where the time goes to. You know, and then, and then if you're doing graphics or any type of allocation as far as, you know, identifying what the system is to make your servicing ability easier, that's where the time comes in. So, again, I hope I've answered many of your questions now showing you the difference. Once again, looking at them installed in a system and then seeing just how easy these are to use and how they streamline your build process. Um, it's tremendous. And when you factor in, and I cannot emphasize this as well, I have matching pro motor cables out of 18-gauge double-shielded cable that have plug-and-play uh, female connectors for these GX16 5-pin. So there's your motor cables and your connections done to your drives when you buy that. Think about the amount of time you're saving. I cannot emphasize that enough. That means if you're building the motor cable end, just so everybody is aware, the motor cable on one end requires five solder points. The motor cable on the opposite end requires five solder points. Each access will require five solder points for each one of these used. Multiply that times your axis. You have three axis, you need three of these. Three times five is 15. Then you're going to need another 10 connections per motor cable. So break it down. It starts adding up very, very quickly. I want you guys to be aware of what you're paying for. Whether you pay me or you look at stuff that you can do to save time, these are done properly and are going to streamline your entire build process. And again, showing it this way, I think everybody is enlightened now on how these work. So again, guys, I once again thank you all for your support. I'm trying to do more videos to keep everybody up to date. And, keep, and as I'm getting more expansive in terms of the business model, 
I want everybody who's novice to understand what they're getting involved in and how deep down the rabbit hole they can go with wiring if they choose certain platforms that they want to start with. So hopefully this makes things easier. Once again, if you want to contact me directly, you're more than welcome to at storm2313 at gmail.com. That is my direct email. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. I'll put links in the beginning of the video and at the end to all of my subscribers. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Take care.